Hey everyone, Merrick's here bringing you another video. Uh, this one is episode 13 of the DI Cable Guy show. Uh, normally, I have a certain kind of intro that we do for the show. Um, today, it's going to be a little bit different. Um, it's been a really exciting week for me personally and also for the show. Um, you, there's some really big stuff that I would like to talk about right out the gate. Um, so a lot of you following the channel may know, um, I don't just do the podcast. I do videos and that kind of stuff. And I've been working really hard and trying to, to get to a certain place with all of that. And, uh, I've had a lot of help along the way. Obviously everyone that listens has been super, super helpful. Um, Dr. Sparks has been a mild, small part of it. Actually, uh, he's been amazing. So I want to thank Dr. Sparks. Um, I also have to thank Punisher, who uh, really went to bat for me, like, repeatedly. So thank you, Punisher. Um, also really have to thank uh, uh, Davey D. A uh, little background story for you here. Um, I don't even remember how I met Davey. Uh, and I had been talking to him off and on for a while. And, you know, I had mentioned that um, along the course of talking that I kind of always had wanted to make videos like he had, you know, like doing videos for a game and that kind of stuff. But I never had. I didn't know how to do any of that stuff. And he may not even remember this, but he said, you know, you really should do that then. Uh, something like that, you know, like he, he encouraged me to do it, to go for it, uh, be myself, that kind of thing. And uh, that's probably the biggest reason why I finally pulled the trigger and started doing it because at 40 years old, I didn't think, you know, I would learn how to video edit and use Photoshop and that kind of stuff. I just figured I'd never do it. I guess I was a little scared to try. So really, uh, Davey kind of gave me that extra push to go ahead and, and give it a shot. So I have to thank Davey for that. Um, and then him... Uh, Gerson and Benny have given me a bunch of advice on my videos in my channel um, as I've went along so really really want to thank all those guys and uh, with all that uh, of course all you guys listening watching um, on my server giving feedback uh, you know sharing all that stuff has been huge um, so that leads me into a super, super big announcement that's going to make a few changes to this show. Um, and that is that Big Red is no longer our official sponsor because we have a new official sponsor. And they pretty much have said they want to be the number one sponsor they want to be connected with the show completely um, they don't want anyone else to be a sponsor so they've they've came in in a big way and there'll be some changes because of that so our new sponsor drum roll please is the TWO the Toronto Wrestling Organization has decided to become our one and only sponsor. So I know a lot of you were not expecting this. It's huge news. It's huge for me. It's huge for the show. Um, so the TWO is, is fully sponsoring the show. And beyond that, it comes with a lot of perks. A lot of perks. Um, first off, I, I basically get everything I want for doing a, a, a podcast show, right? They're giving me like a brand new mic setup. Like I actually am going to make like this booth kind of thing um, in our basement. Uh, they're sending soundproof tiles, the whole, the whole nine yards. It's, it's ridiculously crazy. Um, this is like being a part of, uh, you know, <sighs> Like the, the, the Dallas, is it the Dallas Mavericks that have the nicest like locker room in sports and, and Mark Cuban like it makes it all cushy and stuff. That's basically what having TWO sponsor you is. You get everything right away. You don't even have to try for it. They just give it to you. You, you don't even have to ask, right? You get 
everything you could imagine you could have. It, it makes basically makes doing uh, podcasts and, and videos easy mode. Like you no longer even have to try. You just get it all. Um, and we'll get into some of this a little bit further because I'm sure my guest is going to want to talk about it. But really, this is this is what I've been working so hard for is to be sponsored um, and endorsed by the Toronto Wrestling Organization. So um, with all that being said, uh, have a have a fantastic show for you guys today. Um, I'm going to do TWO proud. Um, we're going to. Uh, we're going to recap what's happened previously on Cream of the Crop. We're going to have a new edition of Cream of the Crop. And I have a first-time guest on the show today. So I would like to introduce, hailing from Aberdeen, Washington, the one and the only Dr. Bry. Dr. Bry, welcome to the show. Do- Dr. Bry, are you there? Brr. Doc, Dr. Bry? Question mark? Are you looking for brains? Are you sound kind of like a zombie, Dr. Bry. Is this... Are you good? Oh, sorry. Sorry about that, Max. I had the, uh, I had the wrong frequency. Remember, my, uh, my thoughts aren't actually... I'm not actually speaking English right now. I just have my thoughts transmitted, and I was in a world um, where, yeah, they they consume brains as their primary form of nourishment, um, and I was just doing an interview over there for them, and I just forgot to flip the switch. Apologize. Oh no, it's it's all right, dude. I just thought you were so deep into into kayfabe, you weren't coming back. So, uh, that... yeah, no, sorry, sorry about that. It was just miscommunication. Um, no, no, very, okay. very uh, interesting little tidbit. Um, so I believe most of your, I mean, most of your war leaders have already caught on. Um, but uh, I'm kind of surprised that um, this society hasn't taken on the consumptions of brain to take in people's uh, mental capacity and aura. It's generally frowned upon in this culture in this time. Well, yeah, but I mean, that's also why you guys are so simple. Is so it? let me let me ask you something. Merix, have you ever have you ever consumed a higher being's brains? I cannot say that I have. No, I have not. And look where that's gotten you in life. Dude, TWO is my sponsor. It doesn't get any cool. better than that. I'm set for life. Yeah, but... Let's not act like I wasn't a part of that contractual negotiation. Uh, I'm not at liberty to talk about that. So had I had I not consumed, like I can't even count how many cosmic brains I've had over the years. Like literally every every synapse that fires is a brain that I've eaten over eternity. Like it takes that type of consumption to get to the point where I am. And that's why I said, I mean, people, people here, all your, you know, all your greatest minds, they were zombies. Like that's, let's, let's make that 100% clear right now. The, the best way to get smarter and better at something is to eat the brains of someone that is good at that task. And some people got it, some people don't got it, which is fine. I mean, it's just that's just how the world works, but anyways, so yeah, that world. Um you guys probably wouldn't understand anything that they're saying, but just a brilliant brilliant bunch of people over there on that uh zombie timeline. Huh, that's interesting. Um oh, hold yeah. on one second for me, will ya? All right. I'm uh, enjoying a tasty beverage. Um, Still holding. Oh yeah, yeah. So a couple of things. Yeah. So the, well, sorry. I, no, I I'm I, I'm enjoying one of those uh, Liberty Dews that uh, happen around uh, 
the Fourth of July time here in the United States today. Um, we kind of bought some extra cases and uh, don't have them all the time. So I thought, since uh, in honor of the show and getting a new sponsor, that I would uh, crack one of these Liberty Dews and partake in its goodness. Yeah. So, so <sighs> one thing, a couple things about that. One, when did you learn to video edit? Because I heard you say that during your intro, and this is news to me. I mean, it. I'm not saying I'm good, but it turns so by out... Video edit, by video edit, did you mean video record? No, no. I, I mean, like, using... So it turns out Adobe Photoshop Elements um, has a nice, at least intuitive for me, editing tool for me to do the very simple edits that I do um, and name, I, name five cutting when have you ever cut anything uh, I cut a frozen intro that's okay fine I feel like I've seen videos with frozen intros next well yeah because I didn't do it that time obviously oh, interesting Let's 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 keep this at three because I feel like you're gonna struggle with five. <laughs> one you know what? I I do not I do not have to let you sit here and be smirched my good name, sir. All right. So one, there was the editing thing, and two, um, I feel like it's worth mentioning the process. Um, so essentially, you know, when it comes to these types of things, um, there was there was a bidding war. And what TWO essentially has uh, bought for themselves are the exclusivity rights to sponsorship on the show. Um, so, yeah, like you said, there's a ton of perks that you're going to get from that. It's it's really quite ridiculous. Like it's it's honestly not fair to other people making podcasts because you're going to get access to everything. You're going to know everything way ahead of time, like. If, if something comes up, you know, something new in the podcast world that you would need to succeed, like it's just going to be handed to you. And yeah, all the other poor schmucks are going to have to try to earn it on their own. But you don't have to do any of that because you're backed by you're backed by TWO now. But that doesn't mean that Big Red is not still delicious. So let's let's get that right out of the way. So well, while Big Red is no longer the official sponsor because TWO is giving us a lot of very nice things for us to maintain them as the official sponsor of the show. Big Red is still the official unofficial sponsor of the show. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I cannot I cannot I cannot condone that statement, right? Like it's so like I said, uh, a few small changes, nothing major is going to change. But uh, I will no longer... In the be... intro, didn't you say that there were going to be changes due to the thing? Well, a few small changes, but nothing nothing that would affect the integrity of the show. One of those changes is I will no longer ever mention what you just mentioned. I shall never say that name again. So, uh, And also, uh, Dr. Bry, I would like you to remember that I am culpable for your actions on this show so keep that in mind I, don't. I i'm responsible for your words sir i don't think that's how that works no it, like, it, it is in in kindergarten weren't we weren't we taught that everyone is responsible for their own actions right but you were on this platform that is now being brought to the world by TWO and anything you say that could potentially not be what specifically they want can never be uttered. So I am here to tell you, I have my, I have my TWO tie on and my TWO hat and I am TWO man to the core. Sure. So what you're saying is, if I'm understanding this correctly, TWO would not want us to be 
sponsored by that which shall not be mentioned. Uh, I can neither confirm nor deny that. So are you saying that it's to the point? Because what I said was that they weren't sponsoring us. That's true. They're I not. Said, I said they were the official, non-official sponsor. I don't have any unofficial sponsors of the show. I, I think all, all of the sponsors are unofficial. I mean, that might be right, but that's beside the point. No, I mean, all of the ones that you've never mentioned are technically unofficial. Like, I, like Jim's Bait Shop on the corner. Oh, of come on, man. Why you got to do that? Ah, you, I'm going to get fined now. Hey, Jim's <sighs> Bait Shop has been feeding you oh my quality bait under the table for 15 years. Why? Why? Now the next time when I go out fishing and I need crappie minnows, now I'm going to have to pay for it. What the heck, dude? Come on. No, it's fine. It's not they're okay. Not a, no, because they're not an official sponsor. People aren't supposed to know that. People aren't supposed to know that they're not sponsors? They're not supposed to know that they give me stuff for free. Come on, man. Well, well I didn't say that. You just said that. I hate you. I mean, I just, I made a, I made a baseless accusation that you essentially confirmed. This is horrible. I didn't know. I didn't know that. And you're I horrible. Didn't know, had anything going with Jim's? I. Will you stop saying their name? You're gonna. You literally, should... you're gonna get me fined. All right. All right. I apologize. You don't understand. I can't even have my own thoughts. Okay. <sighs> you can. You just have to say what they tell you to say. No. I mean that's that's how I read the contract. You can't talk about that. Gosh dang it! To... I'm I don't know if I'm even gonna air this podcast. You might as well not, because I can tell you if you were if you were scared about the uh, the assassins that were sent to you before. Oh man, Jim's assassins are on another level. Is there a reason, like, specifically why you need to keep bringing this up? I, uh, I just, I'm, I'm jealous. Because mm. while I don't fish, I would like, I would like some type of under the table dealings. You know, you bring up a good not, point. Not, you, no. not once, not once did you offer to take me fishing, sir. And that is where all of this comes from. Do you think maybe that's because we live approximately 3,000 miles apart? I don't... Have you, have you ever... Have you ever made the mm -hmm. effort? Fine. Dr. Sparks, you're a great friend. How would you like to drive all the way out here and go fishing with me next weekend? Next weekend? Can we stop by Jim's? Oh my gosh. No, we can't because you've so then, ruined that. So then, what are we, so then what are we doing? I mean, what, what's, what's the whole point? Listen, here. Do you want to go fishing or not? Not with that attitude. Fine. I'm just going to eat some more of my Cheez-Its, which are delicious. Incidentally, guys... If you haven't tried them yet, there's these Cheddar Jack Cheez-Its, which are kind of extra cheesy, and they're quite delicious. Often I I'm like I'm going to take a sip from a beverage that has no official ties <laughs> at all to the show. The one and only, the incomparable Big Red. <sighs> You're killing me, Smalls. You're killing me. Um... Did you have a pre-game meal today? Pre-show meal? Are you there? Dr. Bry? Did we lose you? Oh, man. This might not be good. He might have went into the ether. I think it's entirely possible that he just quit the show.
Um, not sure why, but it's definitely entirely possible. I think this is officially a time where I no longer have a co-host and I just go solo. I think that's entirely possible. What do you guys think? If you're listening to the show, should this be should this be the end of uh, Dr. Sparks on the DI Cable Guy show? Is this the way it ends? You think it ends this way? Or does he does he miraculously come back? Who can say? But I guess we'll find out. Anyway, now that that moron's not here, we can totally get to the meat of the show. Um, back to talking about how amazing it is to be sponsored by TWO. But uh, Dr. Sparks had, had mentioned jealousy, and I think that's a really good thing to bring up. Wait, have you been talking this whole time? Mm, yes. I thought that we were playing Silence Chicken. You are the worst co-host ever. So, after I took my refreshing sip, I suddenly couldn't hear you anymore. And I have no idea what you said after my refreshing sip until I asked you right now, have you been talking this whole time? Well, I guess that's too bad for you. You should have been listening. Eh, I'm sure I'll catch it on the replay. Yeah. Thanks for that curveball, sir. Was not prepared for that. Which one? Uh, Silence Chicken. You didn't tell me we were going to play that game. Oh. Don't appreciate well, yeah, it. I thought, I thought that you had impromptu, impromptu challenged me to Silence Chicken. So... I was like, well, this isn't my podcast, so I have no vetted interest in this. So I thought I was winning, but then it went on for quite a long time. And then I realized that you had actually been talking this whole time. Uh-huh. So, so the winner, and still Silence Chicken champion, Dr. Sparks. Not everything is a competition, Sparks. That's fine. I agree with you 100%. However, in this case, it was, and I won. <sighs> Moving on. Um, what Speaking you were saying. Which, the, the puppy of positivity says hello. Oh. Well, that's a pleasant surprise. Tell the puppy I yeah. say hello back. Maybe he scratches yeah. his ears, pat his tummy for me. Yeah. Yeah. I gave him a, a quick little pat, and then he... he you know, something that caught his attention in the other room, and then he scurried away. But before he left, he wanted to say hi. Oh, well, that's nice. If anything can save this show, it's the puppy of positivity. Yeah. But I wanted to talk to you. You said uh, you kind of mentioned something about being jealous, and I think jealousy tends to rear its ugly head. It's hard for people to just be happy for people. Have you noticed this? Yeah. And I think they don't really do it on purpose, which is kind of sad. Yeah. I think it's just kind of there. And then if if they were to be presented with it in clear, logical detail, they would probably deny it. But I mean, it kind of is what it is. Like, like I said, I don't even like fishing. So why would I care about the fine selection found at Jim's Bait and Tackle Shop down on 43rd? That's a great question. I don't know why you would. And as from what I understand, you don't want to put in the effort and time to go fishing on a daily basis so you can catch a lot of fish either. Nah. Come on. Why would anyone want to do that? I, I mean, unless you were like a unless you were a professional fisher, and even then like you would have like big nets and stuff, like it would be it would be hard work cuz I mean there's a lot that goes into it, but the actual catching of the fish, I mean, you're casting the net and you know, you would raise your efficiencies that way. Right. I did go crabbing one day. Have you ever gone crabbing? I have never went crabbing. Um, was it so fun? From what, from what I recall about crabbing, you go at night, which is interesting, and you have this kind of contraption. It's kind of like a cage on a rope, and you tie like some chicken into the cage or something like that, right? 
and apparently crabs like chicken. So you you throw this contraption in, and then the crabs grab onto the chicken, and then you yank them out. It was interesting. I only did it once. Question. I remember uh, I, I accidentally threw my cage into some type of little vortex, and I almost lost I almost lost my apparatus. But I have a question. Go ahead. If you put chicken in the crab cage and then you throw it into the sea when you bring it back is that where chicken of the sea comes from uh yes i knew it How, however um most of the time the crab gets it so yeah i mean it's it's kind of limited supplies so that's kind of why that's typically seen as you know the top shelf of that product sure because yeah it's high demand it's like uh it's like the rumors of um kobe crab have you ever i'm assuming you've heard of kobe beef yes yes i have so there are there are rumors allegations and innuendo that there exists kobe crab no which is crab that is felt that is fed exclusively with Kobe beef. Huh. Who knew? Yeah. Very interesting. But yeah. Yeah, I think you're I think you're much better off buying chicken of the farm. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh It's been I'm a really I'm surprised you've had chicken before. I thought it was all just cow and pork for you. What do you mean? What is that supposed to mean? That you like cow and pork? But I don't like chicken? I'm not diversified in the meats that I like? Is that what you're saying? Th- that was my impression, yes. Uh, I've, dude, I've never once heard you refer all to meat, chicken. All meat deserves to be loved and tasted okay. equally. Okay? Okay, that's fair. There's... I'm not saying you don't like chicken. I was saying... I was not aware of you ever having chicken. It's not my favorite. It's not my favorite of the meats. But if I'm gonna get an enchilada, I would rather have a chicken enchilada than a beef enchilada. Huh, interesting. What about a? What about if they offered a pulled pork enchilada? Oh, pulled pork all the way, dude. Pulled pork is one of the best things on the planet. Yeah, I'm just saying. I, I also prefer pork tamales over chicken, with red sauce, not the green. So, if the original thesis was that you are a pork and cow guy, uh-huh. and you have you have tried to contradict that thesis by saying, "I will eat chicken, but I prefer pork and cow." It depends on the you, situation. I, Sometimes I, I prefer I, chicken. That's okay. Alfredo? Uh, Alfredo? I want chicken with Alfredo. I don't want beef with Alfredo. Have you ever had it? What? Beef and some type of creamy Alfredo-like sauce? Sure. Pretty sure Hamburger Helper has something like that. And have you had it? And what did you think about it? Uh, You know, I can't remember specifically... But it was a white looking hamburger helper substance. Was not a fan, but maybe that was just the type of hamburger helper it was. Yeah. Yep. I mean, I don't know for sure. I've not had restaurant quality. Definitely. Yeah, I feel like you've just you've created ties to chicken to where you're like, okay, this dish goes with chicken. But yeah, I just think it's a matter of you probably just haven't had it one of your preferred meat sources because you even pointed out how other things which are available in multiple sources you prefer either pork or beef seems like you sway towards pork so breakfast sausage and bacon both from pork so probably Um, although I would rather have a hamburger than a pork chop 
sure. or, or a steak than a pork chop. So, you know, I, I don't know. It depends on what it is. If I'm going to have something fried, I'd rather have fried chicken. Well, country fried steak is pretty good, even though it's not really steak at all. It's just called that. Uh, do you all have chicken fried steak up there? Yeah, I love chicken fried steak, actually. I wonder if, you know, we need to get with, um, we need to get with G and see if there are any fried chicken poutine variants. He was telling me that his favorite poutine, um, he was saying had bacon in it. So it was poutine with bacon. That sounds delicious. I kind of want to try that. Yeah, I think, uh, I saw on his stream that he mentioned there's some place that has like 30 different varieties. Yeah. Some in Montreal. uh, Yeah. I feel like some type of KFC bowl with a poutine flair. I think that might be something to get involved with. Are we talking about essentially a poutine bowl? Yeah. A a famous poutine maybe even. Yeah. Nice. We might have to, we might have to talk to G about this. Maybe maybe we can get a Ray's Famous Poutine on board as an unofficial sponsor. Will you stop that? I mean, if we got you free poutine, would you not? Hush. There's only poutine. one... Sp- <sighs> poutine forever. All right. Fine. Enough of you. Um, okay. So, we should probably get down to business, Yes. Uh, I guess. I mean, if you want to. I mean, you seem to care way more about the direction and integrity of the show than I do. I'm still, I'm still a man of the people, Merricks. Look, I told you. I'm not a corporate shill. I told you, nothing has changed other than everything has to be this way. Then why are you wearing a button-up shirt? What what's wrong with a button-up shirt? Maybe I just want to look good for the show. All right. Look, sir, nothing has changed. Everything is just the way it was. Yeah. Only minor differences. Okay. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure by next week the beard the beard will be gone. I'm sure it won't. How do you function with that thing? What do you mean, how do I function with that thing? It's amazing. Like, like, if I go more than a couple of days without shaving, I feel like I have a layer of grossness on my face. How can you function with a constant, thick layer of grossness on your face? It's not gross. It's luxurious. You probably have... You probably have three-day-old poutine in there that's disgusting i am very clean i wash my beard daily i do not have three-day-old poutine in there you sir are rude so if we if we kick it back to the archives um there's documented evidence that you are not good at cleaning and you do not enjoy cleaning that's different than me myself personally being clean cleaning a physical building is much different than personal hygiene all right Anyways, just saying. All right. Beards, beards, not my thing. Fair enough. What makes us different is what makes us great. I'll wear the beard. You can wear the skirt. I don't know. As long as you, uh, as long as you fall in line to what you're told to do. Don't worry, I will. You better. Don't you ruin this for me. <laughs> All right. Um So, uh we should probably talk about what's happened previously, right? Previously on Cream of the Crop. Merrick's and Dr. Sparks break down the best in each class. 32 superstars are going to enter and one will rise to the top. For technicians, we talked about Kofi, Doink, Champa, Sting, and Sako. 
For Acrobats, we had Master of the Universe Triple H, Ricochet, Andrade, Stinger, and the surprising Bailey. And Powerhouses, we had Keith Lee, Zombie Austin, Kane, Hogan, and Earthquake. There are exclusions. There are exceptions. Uh, it's our list. It's our Cream of the Crop Invitational. This week, we will be talking about the showboat class and an attempt to decide which showboat rises to the top. It's not bad, Merrick. I think that turned out all right. Yeah, I think so too. Um, that We didn't even have to retake that. Well, thankfully, because every time we retake something, you just delete and we have to do the entire show all over again. <laughs> I know. Imagine being... 35 minutes in and then having to start over because I can't edit. 35 minutes? We, like, finished the show that one time, didn't we? That had nothing to do with editing. We were an hour and 40 minutes in and the cat freaking unplugged my external hard drive. I mean... And it didn't save it. We, we, we did later find out that it was an attempt on your life, so grand scheme of things. Minor. Yeah. Losing a show versus losing your life. I mean, very minor. Yeah. So, anyway, uh, this week I've been told, I mean, this week um, we've decided to do showboats. Uh huh. So, um, I think that's because it, I don't know why, but uh, we decided to do showboats anyway. That's the important thing, right? Um, yeah. So,. Quick question. I know. Um, so, part of your um, perks with TWO is that in addition to them giving you whatever you want to do the podcast, um, they're also going to give you exclusive um, first hand knowledge about upcoming gimmicks. So, I know that they were. They have a, they have a Canadian Samoan on their roster that they were working on having a new gimmick for him and they were going to work on some type of, I think they were going to make him a werewolf or something like that. Uh, have they already, have they already given you the schematics for that guy? I think they were, weren't they just going to give you like a bunch of free merchandise and have him like come to your house and like take pictures with your kids i can neither confirm nor deny that hmm. so if that doesn't happen let me know because that's that's that was part of the deal so if the samoan doesn't show up to take pictures with your kids i need to make some phone calls so there's there's a couple things at this point i would like to address uh one we had long time listener with- Concerned that Dr. Sparks would no longer be affiliated with the show. As you can see, Dr. Sparks is here and will continue to remain here um, until I get sick of him and find someone willing to replace him. Yeah. Keep in mind, though, that I did write contingencies into that contract in case that were to ever happen. What? I'm just saying. I'm not. I'm not an idiot, dude. Come on. Uh, I don't know about contingencies. What does that make me then? You're, you are, the creator. So, you create, and I enjoy. So, please create. You said you were going to talk about some stuff. You haven't talked about anything. What? This is very bad for ratings. What it's not What are you talking about? Bad for ratings. We we would need ratings to have ratings. Right. And you're not helping right now. Well, that's beside the point. No. Anyway, Dr. Sparks is here. I'm here. We're probably going to talk about showboats at some point, I mean. Yeah. That, um What would you say 35 minutes in? Uh 39 minutes now. Yeah, no, we got 
I think we got at least a good six more minutes of nonsense before we even think about talking about it. Yeah, that's relevant. true. We got, we've been allotted 45 minutes to do whatever. I mean, uh, we like to take 45 minutes to say whatever we like to say at the start of these shows. Yep. Um, I do, I do think it's important. So like a lot of people have said, like they think the podcast is going to change because now, um, because I, I may or may not have signed some contra- contractual agreement with TWO that I'm no longer allowed to say things because I might know things ahead of time, right? Like, that's a concern um, that people have had. You're not going to be the same uh, Merricks on your podcast because now you know information ahead of time, so you're not going to be able to talk about information ahead of time. To that, I would reply... When do I ever say anything important ahead of time? I mean, really, like these shows tend to come out way after stuff's already happened. So I don't know what you're worried about, guys. Yeah. And plus, I mean, you are going to get all that information well ahead of time. But you're not going to tell any of them about it. (laughs) Of course not. Why would I do that? Yeah, that's that's just bad for business. It is bad for business. And. We all know here at Merrick's Gaming, our slogan is, we do what's best for business. I feel like you were wanting me to chime in with a secondary tagline there. That's okay. You don't have to. This right. time, I'll work that in next time. We'll, we will talk about that in depth before our next show. That's a, that's a mistake by you. We can't have too many of those. All right. Okay. I mean, I could have done it. I just didn't know if I was allowed to. I mean, that's part of it, too. There's going to be some bumps in the road till you figure out what you're allowed to do and not do. That's just the way yeah. this is. Yeah. Same. It's a, lot, it's a lot easier with the handshake deal I got with Jim. Will you quit bringing him up? He's never listened to a single episode. It's fine. It's not Jim fine. Does, Jim doesn't sell real bait there. You happy? It doesn't matter what I could say. Well, now that cat's out of the bag. Good yeah. job, Sparks. Yeah. Interestingly enough, some of the bait that Jim sells is actually cat. What? Yeah. See? It's, doesn't matter. I can say anything I want about Jim's. They'll <sighs> never know. That's true. No. But wait a minute. You, you said that people are worried that the show is going to change. Like... How many people are listening to enough of the show to they to where they would even notice if it's changed? I honestly don't think the people that are concerned it'll change even listen to the show. They just want to be negative before they even listen to anything. It's interesting. Yeah. I mean, like... Because I, mean, I could see if they had listened to the show, then, I mean, yeah, there's every reason in the world to be negative about the show once you've actually listened to it (laughs) yeah 100 percent. but of all the things to be negative about the show about not that yeah so you think yeah because that makes sense because anyone that's actually heard the show if the possibility if the possibility came of the show changing well then that would cause a glimmer of hope for improvement (laughs) right that could only be good there's only one way to go from here and that is up so I think that's the people that are happy about the change. You can tell that those are the true fans because they're <laughs> they're clinging desperately to the hope that, well, maybe things will finally start getting better. Right. Maybe these two idiots will figure something out. Yeah. Well, not like. No, go ahead. You first, sir. No, I just said not likely. Oh, OK. Fair enough. It isn't likely. Um just so you know, we're counting down this time frame. So we hit our spots. Uh, we have uh, roughly 51 seconds till the 45 minute mark. So we've okay. almost filled it with enough nonsense. Okay. Okay. At the 45 minute mark, um, get ready because that is when the wacky, wild, inflatable tube men behind you are going to pop up. That's going to be the sign to transition. That was supposed to be a surprise. No, I'm just letting you know. No, now we can't do it this week. Good job. Okay. That's fine. Best I'm going to be able to do is this. 
right here. This is what you get. You don't get wacky inflatable tube guys now. Thank Dr. Sparks. You get Bailey on her character screen lifting her hands in the air. Good job, Dr. Sparks. You ruined it for everyone. I mean, there ain't no stopping me now. Okay. And go. Showboats. This week on <laughs> Cream of the Crop, we discuss yeah, uh, showboats. Yeah, hold on. That, yeah, didn't we start recapping 15 minutes ago? Like no, 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 no. Was... We 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 did. We talked about what was before. Now we're talking about what's now. We had to get that in at the 30 minute mark, and then we had to fill a little more nonsense. And did did I not send you the timeline for when things need to be said ahead of time? Did you not read it? Did you not look at it? Do I need to yes. like staple it to your forehead? Yes, I read it. And what I'm saying is that you never finished the recap. Sure, I did. No, you didn't. What didn't I you do that? You talked about Tex and Acros. I talked about powerhouses too. No, you didn't. Yeah, I did. You just didn't uh, listen. Oh, was that what you were talking about when I couldn't hear for like those couple minutes? <sighs> you and your <laughs> okay. You and your Sorry. stupid that's silence what, chicken what... game. I you're you're not allowed. I'm writing it into your that contract. Is... You're not allowed to play silence chicken ever again. I think silence chicken is gonna take over. Um, 20 questions at the end of the game we're just gonna sit here in complete silence and see who cracks first i mean that's that, that's the best our listeners can hope for neither of us I, talking I'm, I'm sure it'll be gold yeah all right so then if you if you did talk about powerhouses then yeah sure go ahead continue i apologize no it's too late now you've ruined the intro we lost our time slot everything is time stamped has to be an x amount of time we have a schedule to adhere to now we talked about this so now and even the fact that i'm re-explaining this to you is cutting into the time we could be talking about the showboat class and who's the cream of the crop it's fine dude i i have complete governance over time we're good i'll just i'll just change the space-time continuum and this will happen exactly when it was supposed to happen as of now we're good excellent all right so um we are required to nominate i mean uh, we've decided to pick um oh boy i ruined that didn't i no i don't think they'll catch on okay so we are required uh, <clears throat> i'm sorry uh the first showboat i would like to nominate is showboat uh hbk That's a mighty fine choice. Let me tell you why. So, um, up now at shoptwo.com, uh, you'll find the latest in Showboat HBK merchandise. Um, that's it. That's the best I can do. Uh, you'll find his um, Heartbreak Kid gear from uh, the Royal Rumble 95. Uh, that you'll be able to dress up for for Halloween. You <coughs> will also be able to get your official um, TWO spandex. Um, I'm sure there are other things. Anyway, uh, this Shawn Michaels, best Shawn Michaels, top tier, tricolor build for the win, unstoppable. Uh, easily best character in the class. Uh, don't even need to debate about it. Um, it was I did like a, a one minute preview with him, and I knew right away he was the best character in the game. Um, yeah, I'm. I feel like um, people don't know yet that the tricolor is actually the new meta. Oh yeah, for sure. Like, if we can get tricolors and moves that convert immobile gems into botch gems like that's where the future of professional digital wrestling is going 100 percent. couldn't so. agree more so uh if you haven't so, got them yet you need to get them asap uh so yeah. dig deep uh whether it's into your your couch the, se the seams of your couch your pockets uh, the, the change off of the floor and go to an arcade and crawl around on the ground and see if you can find some quarters um, this HBK the best HBK and you need this guy he's clearly the yeah. best in the game yeah 
Uh, interestingly enough, um, shoptwo.com still accepts uh, CODs. So you can order and you can just pay for it when it shows up at your door. I didn't know that. Yeah. That's pretty amazing. Okay, we've hit the five-minute mark. We talked about uh, HBK um, for five minutes, so we've done our due diligence there. All right, now on to the next guy in the cream. Who would you like? Who would you like to nominate for the showboat cream of the crop, Doctor Sparks? Um, so there's actually a guy who he comes from a long lineage of wrestlers. He he started. Um, he trained under um, what was what was what's his name um, Bruno Garofalo or what was that guy? Oh, the TWO guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bruno Sand Martino. Yes, uh, he trained under Bruno Sand Martino, and um, right now he is selling. A lot of t-shirts and coming up for Halloween he's selling a lot of masks um, so through no contractual obligation to anyone else uh, I would like to nominate the fiend Merrick's what are your thoughts on that I wish I had that card I do not. Uh, I also do not have an issue with you nominating the fiend, but I would like to know your your reasoning for nominating the fiend. Um, my reasoning, or what I was told to say. Your reasoning. We've covered what okay. we were, we were told to say for now, so we're good for a okay. while. All right. So, uh, the fiend is kind of your ultimate control character. Um, so we are in. A world whether people like to admit it or not um, where straps and metals play a huge role so I remember when when these things came out there were a lot of people that were like oh these are stupid I hate these I'm not gonna use these and now like if you go into a match and you don't have any metals and you're going against someone like go into one of these tours um, like this uh, what was it right now the the zombie tours that are going on right now to use uh, for the Daniel Bryan contest. Mm -hmm. Go go into one of those hell modes and fight those guys with a character that doesn't have any straps and any medals. And tell me how that feels. It it kind of hurts, uh, Sparks. It it kind of hurts. So the thing with the thing with Fiend is um, right now there's no medals that stop bleed. So bleed is something that is very strong and continues to be strong into the um, five star world. But even at four star, I mean, maybe you can even make an argument that it's even stronger at four star just because of the lower health. Um, but what what I like most about fiend is that you you have the bleed tick off during the submission. So submissions, as I've told you before, are extremely powerful in single player contests. And if you can somehow add more benefit to that. So one example would be bleeds where you're taking off extra damage during the submission. Or uh, another example would be trap gems. So if you put out trap gems, that's more opportunity for those traps to go off during the submission. Um, both of those make the submission even stronger than it already is. Um, so him, big bleed, um, very long submission that you can use multiple coaches to buff. Um, there's also a coach to buff the bleed if you happen to have them. Uh, and in the meantime, he ha he can turn basically almost the entire board into project gems. So yeah, he's just ultimate control, ultimate protection. Um, very, very strong character that can be used for a lot of situations. Okay. Uh, wouldn't I probably wouldn't be someone that I would use um, up front for showdown because as we've as we've talked before, you don't you don't really want showboats out in front. 
and you don't want submission guys out in front because either they're going to get pinned or they're going to do a submission and then the next guy is just going to tag in and then it's going to be worthless. But for tours, yeah, for tours, he's probably one of the strongest characters. I mean, even at four stars, you can take down five stars, etc. Um, and then, yeah, having a turn one sub guy for feud is extremely valuable. So Fiend, super strong, um, very cool t-shirts. Uh, go check out his masks and um, have your pets spayed and neutered. Excellent. Okay. I have no issues with the fiend. Uh, I will, I am happy to say he will go into the cream of the crop. I have no reason to say no to you on that, sir. I like that pick. All right. So now your turn. Okay. Um, I don't think my pick will come as any surprise. I've touted this guy for probably going on a year now. Uh, I think. Uh, it's a it's about time you give him some credit. Yeah, I mean, I've got a a long way with this guy. Fashion Police was my go to in Showdown. Whoa, forever. whoa, 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 whoa! The notes said that this is when you talk about Andre the Giant. Um, no, I'm. That's not what the note said. You read it wrong. No, right. sorry. I apologize. That's okay. I I, I just I, pick him next time. I appreciate you watching out for me. Um, I don't want to get in trouble. Anyway, um, the note said clearly talk about Fandango. Um, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna push him on TWO, uh, next month. Oh crap. I wasn't supposed to say that. That's uh, fine. Like, uh, remember there's, they don't get, they don't get TWO in the States. Okay. All right. So, uh, Dango, uh, super strong in showdown, um, with the fashion police tag link. Um, very strong build if you run double armor and honky tonk man um he is fantastic at getting people tagged in quickly because he's got a 5 mp move so even if you're not tagging him with uh with breeze it's one one yellow match in showdown and bob's your uncle and you're yep. you're you know getting your then you can get your opponent in plus you can fill up uh, yellow gems with the purple chews. So uh, he's great at loading. He's great solo. His finisher is super nasty, especially once you uh, factor some metals and straps in there. I think my finisher is usually hitting around 85, 90 K now. Um, and then you choose those four columns of protects with honky tonk man and stuff. He's quite good. Um, Marix, can I interrupt you for a second? Yeah, go ahead. Um, I am almost ashamed to do this. But I forgot to wish you a happy National Sausage Pizza Day. Aha! I was wondering if you would, would you would know that was today. You are not the first person to tell me that today, Doctor Sparks. So, um, yeah, happy National Sausage Pizza Day. Um, I've heard you rant about Dango many, many times. So I'm actually going to go get a slice of pizza. If you could just kind of keep talking about Dango till I come back, though. Yeah, I can do that. Let me know when you're back. And uh, where's my pizza? Just, now, just, you didn't ask if I wanted any. You can just you can just ask TWO to bring you some pizza. Dude. You're oh, be that, there in 15 that, minutes or less. That's right. I get everything I want now. My bad. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. All right. You, you keep going. I'm going to go get some sausage pizza. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Dango's also got a, he can be turn one in feud, uh, change out the, the purples for the tornado DDT and then put in the spinning heel kick and you can get to the finisher turn one, uh, with woods. So super versatile, uh, like him solo, love him in tags and showdown. Um, I have moved on from fashion police as my defense, but Dango is still in my defense. Uh, I'm using Sako and Fandango. So he's one of those guys that's a top tier showdown guy, absolutely, and very solid um, in feud as well. Uh, one of the most useful showboats, if not the most useful showboat. Um, so I definitely uh, would put him in my in my uh, cream of the crop for showboats. Um, 
I think I don't really think I need to go into anything else. Uh, I I doubt Sparks is gonna challenge uh, me, including Dango, but he might. We can find out when he gets back from getting his pizza. So I'm just gonna pencil. You know what? I don't even need to ask him. I was told we had to put Dango in, so in he goes. Um, and what? Now, what? Oh, hey, nothing. Carry on. No, I actually didn't hear any of that. I just heard you talking. It sounded like you were talking to someone. I was confused. Oh, yeah. No, I said um, that uh, we were required to put Dango in, so it didn't really matter if you didn't want him in or not. He was going in. Oh. But, I yeah. mean, to give the illusion, do you care if... Uh, are you okay with Dango being in the cream of the crop? Yeah, no, it's fine. No problems? Yeah, I'm more I'm more interested in this pizza right now. Uh, what kind of pizza did you get, sir? I'm um, actually... Um... It's probably full of veggies, knowing you. Well, no, it's National Sausage Pizza Day. So let me let me know when you get that picture. That looks delicious. So it has sausage, pepperoni, caramelized red onions, and gorgonzola. That looks really good. That's quite tasty. I wonder if I can... I, I might order a pizza later tonight. It is National Sausage Pizza Day. We'll see when yeah. Mrs. Merrick's get gets home if she has any plans for dinner. She should be home soonish, actually. You guys might get to hear her today. Maybe not, though. We may be done before then. Um, okay. Did uh, you ever make that roast? What's that? Did she ever make that roast? Oh, that was the... That, that was the... Um, the mother-in-law, not Mrs. Merrick's, that was going to make the roast. And yes, she did the next day. It was delicious. Good. Wow. I love roast. So so where are we now? Were you, were you done with Dango? Or you still yeah, yeah, yeah. I was done with Dango. Will you, eat your, uh, will you eat your slices of pizza? Would you like me to pick the third guy or talk about my next pick? Or would you like to, would you like to go? Um, you can go because I think some of the people that would go next, I would have reasons as to why... I don't particularly like them. Oh, well, no. The guy that you're going to pick is really good, and I don't have them. So, yeah, go ahead. Okay. So, uh, the next one I would nominate would be uh, Kane, Zombie Kane. Um, I will throw some caveats out. Uh, normally, our caveat is, you know, they might need gear or whatever. Kane doesn't need gear. But for Kane to be all that Kane can be, he needs a uh, boss plate. He's still good without the boss plate but nothing like with the boss plate with the boss plate he is a he's a holy nightmare and very hard to deal with he's got a kick out that's pretty much always loaded he's blowing the whole board up every single turn and stunning you every single turn um so yeah uh you can't stop it with mp down you can't stop it with anything other than anti-stun or stunning zombie kane himself so if you have zombie kane you have a legendary strap and you have boss plate um he's literally unstoppable uh, if you run him with a dual mp trainer um like this and feud with mp perks even mp down doesn't stop him from being turn one um so yeah with the kick out there there's no fear of not kicking out like showboats sometimes run into uh so zombie cane 100 percent would be in my um in my cream of the crop but he does yeah. need the boss plate to get everything you can out of him without the yeah. boss plate i wouldn't probably use him i would use zombie austin instead for sure every time look for legendary straps and boss plates at shop two.com right exactly uh any issues with me uh penciling zk in, in? no i think he's really good uh if anything that whole spiel reminded me because you're saying that he doesn't need gear. Merricks, what's up with all these people saying that they didn't think the Stone Cold gear was worth getting? Man, uh, I don't have his gear, and uh, I purchased. Well, yeah, a... but you have Zombie Kane, right? And you just said I would use Zombie Kane, but if I didn't have him, I would use Zombie Stone Cold. 
Right. If I didn't have, yeah, zombie stone cold with gear. Uh, you have the gear now, right, uh, Doctor Sparks? Am I right about that? Yep. I press. Uh, I press the button. Nice. Uh, I wasn't able to press that button as of this time. I don't think I we're will planning. be. We're planning on your part. You're not wrong. It was. You, you probably know, pulled the button last time. You, you know, you would think for someone that has all the information ahead of time, I would have been better prepared for that. Yeah, I mean, you're not the brightest bulb in the box, though. That's true. Um... Where was I? Oh, As uh, of, by yes. the time where you literally tried to pull the button instead of pushing it. Yeah, you know, we don't talk about that, okay? It was one okay, time. Yeah. All right. Uh, would you say it almost doubles his speed, the gear, since you got a chance to play around with it this weekend? Yeah, like it complete. I mean, if you play him the same way, then maybe you're not going to notice much difference. But, I mean... Typically with Zombie Stone Cold, you would play where you would set up your five matches and you're trying to get as many five matches as possible before you set your pin so that you can do as many stun moves and then keep it going for as long as possible. With the gear, you're doing so much damage that it makes more sense to try to make as big a cascade as you can as long as you get at least one yellow match. Because most of the time, even against five stars, two of those cascades and the match is going to be over. Nice. So in terms of, and the thing is, and we're talking about feud right now. So the gear does a uh, 200% extra damage on silence gems and all the gems that you're going to be breaking are going to be silence gems. So plus 200% is essentially triple the damage. And the, MP coach or the MP perk that everyone gets every single feud has for the last I don't know how many months been plus 100% silence gem damage. Yep. So essentially you've turned him into a times 4 gem damage guy. Hard to argue with that. It it ain't bad. Yeah. Uh if Zombie Austin is one of your primary feuders uh, and you can get that gear, I think you 100% should. I would argue that if Zombie Austin isn't one of your primary feuders, but he is your best zombie, that you should have gotten that gear, and he would have immediately been your best feuder, probably. He's very, very good, very, very reliable. In the right hands, he's very fast. Um, in the wrong hands, not as fast as he could be, but if you are not super good with him, the gear will make him much faster for you, um, and hence better slash easier for you to use. Plus, you don't need to keep the cycle alive as long when you're doing that much damage, so it's a lot more consistent, I would say, too. Would you agree? Yeah, like, you focus on the damage, not the stun, and really, with, with perks, you only need one purple match to redo the to redo the stun anyways so it's not that hard to set up a cascade to where you're either going to get a yellow match to redo it or set up to where there's a purple match somewhere i don't know i'm just saying i saw a lot of people out there saying oh well stone cold i don't use him anymore he's not great anymore there i'm gonna get something better again yeah maybe there's stuff that's gonna be better but if he is your best zombie, which for a lot of people he's going to be, I think, you know, people talk about him being top tier already. It shoots him up easily an extra tier. Yeah, you know, um, I know except for this, except for one dude, which I don't even know if we want to bring up this episode or wait until that episode. But essentially, it makes every opponent a joke, except for that one dude. Yeah, uh, or, or if you go for... Zombie Austin's one of those guys where you hope you can and stun lock him or you're not going to have a good day, generally. Um, so, uh, but, Sparks, this is the... I think you forgot which cream of the crop this was. 
we were talking. You talked about Zombie Gear. I felt it was relevant. Oh, it's it's relevant. It's relevant. I just and I don't disagree with you actually. Um, and by the time this comes up, the gear isn't going to be on the store anymore. So <laughs> yeah, that's true. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. <laughs> You're, you're such a weasel. Weasel heels forever, right? Indeed. Okay, it is your yeah, turn to pick good. a... That was tasty. Uh, yes, I want pizza. Thank you. Um, I generally... You know me. I'm, I typically enjoy veggies on my pizza. Yeah. Because um, I think sausage pizza tends to be kind of boring flavor-wise. You're but boring. But this, because it had it had some other, some other stuff going on. Oh, it was great. It's the... It's the sausage pizza for a refined palate. Hmm. Refined palate, you say? Indeed. Uh, would you like to pick your next showboat? Um, or nominate a showboat? Is this the? Is this the last one? So no, we got. No, no, we've got three so far. Uh, no, we got four. Who's the fourth? We got Fiend, Dango, and Zcane. No, we did HBK Fiend. Dango. Oh, Z-chain. right. The corporate. The corporate. Never mind. Yes. Uh, mm-hmm. Um. Or do we just want to ignore him since he's going to win the tournament? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's winning the tournament. We'll just ignore him. We've only done three. Okay. And then we have the winner. So yeah. the rest is moot. Congratulations, Showboat HBK. Um, available now at shoptwo.com. You're an excellent pitch man. I knew there's a reason I kept you around. Yeah. So, oh, speaking of pitches, slight sidetrack. Yeah. Uh, started DDP yoga this week. Uh, it kicked my butt all week long, but I stuck with it all week. Um, I have to say, after a week, I'm pretty impressed, and I think it's going to be pretty legit. I will keep you guys posted. But if you, um, if you, if you're in a place where you can't really do a lot of cardio, you can't go to a gym because of COVID. Um, you're not much of a runner. You're in bad shape. Um, that kind of stuff. This is the workout for you. Surprisingly low impact, surprisingly highly effective so far, and I'm very, very impressed. I've uh, done a lot of different kind of workout stuff. Uh, played football in high school, boxed a little bit, um, so done a lot of different stuff. Done some martial arts, but this it's pretty legit. Um, so if you're looking for a workout that you think, but you you're not sure you can get into it, I would I would highly recommend checking it out. Eating Brazilian chocolates is not a martial art, sir. I disagree. Okay, that's fair. Um, I was going to say also, um, all of those situations that you mentioned, excellent candidates for DDP yoga. Um, Also, if you are a former uh, wrestler trying to recover from drug addiction. Right. Yeah. So wide multitude of people that it can cater to yeah the man has done some fine work and that's not just our corporate overlords telling us to say that no that's 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 our actual beliefs very impressed so far well yours yeah mine yeah i don't have first-hand knowledge from what i've heard from other people not just you from other people it seems to be good so yeah good job i'm glad i'm glad it's working out for you yeah let's hope it continues sorry on to your on to your pick sir so at this point, I feel like we have people that either are good, but that there's a reason why I don't like them, or that I feel are good, but probably aren't going to win. So it's almost like, what are we doing? So question real quick yeah. before you get too far. Um, do we want to exclude junkyard dog with gear because it's so rare or do we want to include him that's question one is he is he going to be an exception or not with the gear and two um and this was a curveball um zombie roman too new and do we exclude because too new or is he in the conversation i would say too new because if we include him i think we have to start talking about walter also okay which we could also do we could uh so do not get mad if we leave your zombie roman off of the list he is too new for this season's 
cream of the crop. He may make a future iteration if uh, we are still around and allowed to do cream of the crop. Yeah. And plus, um, he was nerfed and is clearly garbage now. Oh, yeah. Totally. Yeah. So, no no real reason to even bring him up. No, horrible. Uh, so, junk, junkyard the, dog with gear? Too rare? Um, I think the gear is too rare, but I'm not even sure if he would... I don't know if he would. I don't know if he would make the cut. I mean, I think. I think he's. I think he is good. I mean, I, a couple months. A couple months ago, I told you all that he was going to be good when he got released. Um, again, because I've been getting this pre knowledge for months now. Um, but yeah, I don't. I just. I don't know. We can go with too rare. Neither of us have the gear, so I don't have first hand knowledge. I have faced him a couple times. And when he does a three yellow match, it hurts. Just a three yellow mm-hmm. match. So mm-hmm. uh, I would like to play with him with gear, so I would have a better idea. I think I think he would be if we weren't excluding him. I think he would be on the list. Um, but we'll go ahead and exclude him. Uh, also, are we going to exclude? Uh, continue to exclude Hall of Fame? So no Hall of Fame sting in the conversation. Yes. Yeah, I think that's a universal exclusion. Okay. So there, um, there you have our okay. exclusions, guys, so you know our I exclusions. Wanna, I want to bring up a guy that I'm not nominating him. I just think we should discuss him. Um, Flair. Do you want to – what do you want to do about Flair? Because <clears throat> when, when you do it right, he can obviously hit for a ton of damage. Yeah. I just – I don't like using him. I don't like He's, using him either. He is a tickle clunky. Just yeah. a tickle though. I I would not put him on my my list. I wouldn't include him in my top five showboats. I can see why people might. He is not for me. He would not make my top five. So I would tell you a guy that I would much rather use instead of Flair. Um Dusty Rhodes. I love Dusty. Sweet, sweet Dusty. He's super so, fun. I, I've talked about, I've talked about him before. How he's basically a better Kurt Angle. Take that. And yeah, he's fun to use. He recycles. He's got a sub. The sub leaves protect gems. Um, fun guy to use. I would much rather use him than Flair. And. Yeah, I feel like if you even if you put them against each other, I mean, Dusty would neutralize Flair pretty quickly, pretty easily. So yeah, in my opinion, for my gameplay style and what I enjoy, um, I like Dusty. But again, that doesn't necessarily mean that I think he deserves to go on this list. Things so, things are getting things are getting kind of dire. So you you want you want to put Dusty up for consideration at this point? Is that what you're saying? Uh, yeah, I want your thoughts on Dusty, kind of like we talked about Flair. Like, I feel like right now we're we're creating pools of maybes, and then maybe, what do we need, two more? Yeah, I have another one I can throw into the mix that to me is probably yeah. a sure thing. Um, but, yes. So, Dusty do, can do the cycle back and forth thing, right? Um, uh, he does the uh, sub thing. And then he destroys random blacks, and then he, he he makes random yellows, and he just goes back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Um, and he's he's really super fun to play, actually. Um, he's a guy that I want, I would love to test at five star for sure. Dusty is on that that list of guys I would really want to test. Um, and Showboat is one of those classes where, you know, I've said this before, I think you get yourself one of those top guys that you're comfortable with, and then it's kind of a gimmick class, so you can kind of kind of play around with it. Look for a Protect Gem guy that you like. In my case, it's Dango, who also happens to be pretty, uh, pretty efficient, top-tier kind of Showboat, you know. Um, but then, you know, maybe find a guy and play around with to take a shot on that you think might be good. I think potentially Dusty could be one of those good secondary guys. Um, I have, I have, I would say for me, I have three guys, potentially four that I would consider for the last two spots. Um, I, yeah, I, get- I feel like some of them are, some of them are pretty rare. So one of them, um, 
super dusty uh nwo big show right i he I, so he does he does everything you just mentioned but better yeah it, nwo show i think absolutely belongs on the list he is very rare um but you know he can do a ton of stuff he's got sub he's got a huge area he turned he recycles super well he can freeze the whole freaking board so you can't do a gosh dang thing um if you really want to have fun you can take him against booker t and steal his power gems with class advantage he's got a heal thing going on um he also is nwo so if you have one of those bleed straps you can potentially throw that on him another boss plate candidate um, to really make that uh, that plate work. So I think NWO show, I would feel comfortable saying belongs on the list, but I don't know if you want to say you feel comfortable with him on the list. I mean, at this point, like I said, the people that aren't rare, I think are way better than the people that are more common. So I feel like if we put people that we make an argument like, oh, well, they're too rare, then we're going to, we're going to end up with some people that are on the list and they're just destined to lose round one. Right. So, so, so you, don't yeah, have a, this, you don't have a problem with show? No, nah, I don't really have a problem with them. I mean, Godfather is another example. Like yep. if you have, if you have uh, Vince leveled up, he's incredibly a problem. Yeah. That's that, and that's the thing. Like he he does require a uh, five star Vince, but then and then if you got his plate during that event too, not only is he gonna blow the whole board up turn one, you're also gonna probably recycle and do it all again turn two. And defensive straps do not count against loot gems. So um, and you get people running him that don't have him leveled up. <laughs> but all of that damage you talked about is from his trainers. Yep. So you go in, oh, here's a three bronze godfather. That's not going to be a problem. Death. Ooh, yes, it is. Yep. Uh, that would actually be my that would actually be my fifth pick, and then the there's a few honorable mentions, but Godfather would be the other guy I would put on there. Alright, so assuming nothing changes, um, HBK wins the tournament. Yep. Then we have Fiend Dango, I don't even remember the third one. Z Kane. Z Kane. Fiend Dango, Z Kane. Um, Big Show, and what's his name? The guy you just said. Godfather. Godfather. So, people that are being left out for right now um, Zombie Roman, just because we feel like leaving him out. Yep. Uh-huh. Um, Rick Flair, which. Because we don't like him. Yeah, solid, but I think the people that we named are better. Yep. Um, another guy that's really solid, pretty annoying, uh, Hacksaw. Mm-hmm. Hacksaw can give you problems. Yeah, I think he's. I think he's good. Recycles real well. You know, breaks up a lot of things. But yeah, I don't think he's in that same class with the people that were just mentioned. Um, so yeah, I think. Unless you're bringing Bubba in with the hot tag, um, I think we're good. Yeah, I would like to say um, for like really, really close for me, and uh, he's a guy I kind of want to take five star to see because I think he has a lot of potential, maybe more than it looks like on paper, more than people think. Um, uh, I would. Big protect gems on that guy. What's that? The big protect gems on that guy. Yeah, you know who I'm gonna say then, huh? Yeah, I know everything, Max. Uh, Ultimate Warrior, Masters of the Universe. I think, uh, given right scenario, I think he could be a very, very big problem. Um, so I would say I would put. I I I. I mm, I would be tempted almost to put him in over over other people, just but I don't know for sure because I haven't haven't te- it, I haven't used it myself at a high level. But so Ultimate Warrior is certainly a very high honorable mention potentially. Well, maybe so, so you say that. List. You say that. Mm-hmm. Um, are you putting him in over NWO Big Show? I feel like NWO Big Show is just so annoying 
to deal with that it's hard to to not like i mean if you see nwo and big show do you really uh, nwo show and showdown do you really want to deal with that crap if he's got his one mp freeze the whole board i don't really want to unless i know i can kill him turn one which sometimes i i know i can but if you don't you're going for a long day yeah so Uh, i don't know okay so then would you put him in over a godfather if you had a leveled up vince if I had a leveled up Vince, that's a great question. If I had a leveled up Vince, if I had the skill plate, you know, I have a legendary strap for Godfather, then I just, I don't know because he's going to do like, what is it? 350,000 damage every turn. If I had all those things, I, I don't know if I could. Uh, you're not putting him in over Kane. Correct. You, you're not putting him in over Dango. <laughs> we all know that. Um, and we're not putting him in over Fiend for sure. I was gonna ask because I was I was gonna say I know no. I wouldn't put him in over Fiend, nah. but I don't know I don't He's... know how you feel. Maybe nah. maybe uh, nah. you know what? It's because of Sako. If you didn't have Sako, you wouldn't respect Bleed as much as you do now. That's not true. So yeah, I think while it sounds like you would put him in. Realistically, I think you have him right. He's a very high honorable mention. Very high, yeah. Because, I, th- I think the point of Godfather is that he has to have Vince. Right. Because if you don't have Vince, he's you not, don't. He's I worthless. Think he's in the top five. Yeah. Yeah. No. So, uh, but I do think like if someone wanted to put Warrior in, it wouldn't bother me. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like I, I wouldn't fight it. I think he is potentially in that same tier. I just yeah. don't know. Yeah. So. Um, uh, other honorable like I'm fine with I like Dusty as an honorable mention I think he could be a lot of fun so I'm cool with that pick I think Piper maybe um, uh, deserves to be in there and maybe for his own reasons different reasons as an honorable mention possibly Typhoon yep all of these guys I think are very good and to me they're all they all feel like honorable mentions like they're all guys that are good. If you have them leveled up, you can get a lot of utility out of them. But they're not the people that are going to carry you in the game. You know, they have their niche uses. Um, but if they're your, I mean, the people that you've just mentioned right now, like these, you know, these people outside of the top five. If they're your main fighter right now, eventually you're going to get someone that's going to easily be better. Whereas the other guys, I mean, Zombie Kane is going to carry you a lot of things. Dango is going to carry you a lot of things. Fiend is going to carry you a lot of things. Piper Absolutely. probably not going not going to carry you a lot of things. I mean, you're going to do some good things with them. Another another person that it requires thought, but if you're really smart about it, he can do a ton of damage. Is uh, Bobby Roode? Yeah. I I'd put him as an honorable mention guy too, definitely. But again, Bobby Roode suffers almost from the zombie Stone Cold problem, where people are gonna either think he doesn't do a lot of damage, or if they do know how to set the board up properly, they're gonna think, oh, it takes too long. Which yeah, I mean, it's he's a he's a thinking man's showboat, but. He's good. Yeah. But for her honorable mention. Yeah, I like it. I think I think that's uh, pretty accurate. I mean, as long as Flair isn't in the top five, I'm good. Hmm. You know who could be fun? Kind of interesting. Yeah. Um, assuming you had his gear. Uh, Showboat, Aust- Showboat Austin. Oh. Double damage from reinforced gems. And uh, he has uh, one of those pesky kickouts that I like so much. Again, because of Sako. Before Sako, zero respect. I wouldn't say zero respect. I, as I recall, even though it's not the move set that you use higher, both you and I commented how much how silly it was and fun it was to use the HBK's kickout. Yeah, I didn't so, say I didn't respect it. I said you didn't respect it. Well, that's just patently false, sir. All right. I'm fine with you saying it's patently false. Okay, excellent. 
Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I mean, for more information on all of these, go check out the Showboat episode, which is somewhere in there. It is somewhere go to, in there. Go to, go to the Discord. They're all, they're all broken up um, on the Discord. Uh, and even there's a direct link if for some reason you don't want to learn about life and you just want to jump straight to the class discussion there's a link in there that'll take you straight to the class discussion indeed so all right i feel pretty good about that so now what we play a game yeah talk more about sausage pizza what what do you want to do i mean we hit an hour 30 right on the nose so i think uh i think the thing says that we have to play a game right yeah i mean that's this is where i was supposed to ask you whether or not you wanted to play a game yeah let's play a game all right sir i am prepared um hopefully you are prepared so the the rules remain the same uh don't be dodgy um i don't like that rule any iterative questions that you could just keep asking over and over again until you get to the desired result. Um, you can only ask one per iteration for the first 10 questions. Um, the iterations will reset after question 10. And then after your 15th question, all questions are wide open. You can ask whatever you want. Okay. Um, Sir, are you ready? And as always, uh, if your final guess is wrong, then you automatically lose. I am ready. Last time was really close. It came down to the last question. Was it I'm, the last question? I yeah, know it was close. It was. I don't know if it was literally the last question. It was. I'm I'm a little nervous. So, but I think I got nah, this. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. Let's let's do so, this. I'm ready whenever you are. All right. Does this character have facial hair? Uh, he does not. That is one. Does not. Okay. Hmm. Does this character have multiply gems? Uh, he does not. That is two. No facial hair, no multiply gems, and now I can't do a, a different style of gem for a while, correct? Uh, correct. Not until 10. Okay, no facial hair, no multiply gems. Um, does this character use... Mm, that's not right. I don't think... I think that would be considered dodgy. Um, and... Can I ask Era now? Like, but yeah. only once? Yeah, okay. All right, yep. Um, you know, I think... Is this character modern Era? Uh, he is not. That is three. Okay. Not modern, not multiply gems, not facial hair. All right. Correct. Uh Does this character have a head accessory like a hat or a headband? Uh he does not. That is 5, I believe, or is that 4? I think 4. So he doesn't have facial hair. He doesn't use multiply gems. He might be a she, saying. Uh, you asked an era question? Not yet. Yes, I did. Modern era. You're right. That's three. And you asked about if he wears a hat? Yeah. Hat. Yep. Four. Did you, did you ask anything else? Mm, that seems like it's it and just for future reference because this came up on the last episode um, regardless of if it's male or female I'm just always going to refer to them as he until you've actually 
figured out whether he is male or female. And you can't ask that question until 15, remember? Right. Yeah. Um, so I still have I still have a class option to me. So yep. uh, is this character a striker? He is not. Five. Okay. Do um hmm oh um stop it game um let me go to what is it that I want to ask hmm. Does this character wear a robe? He does not. That is six. Hmm. Um. Okay, let's do this. Uh, does this character have the rock and sock connection tag link? He does not. That is seven. Okay. All right. Um... And we've decided, um links like specific links are so specific that that's not being dodgy correct um i'm not talking like i can't use like smackdown or that kind of thing or or like legend era but like if it's between you know like the hammer and someone else like that i would say you can for sure use that after question 15 because after question 15 i can use anything yeah. yeah so i would say you can use it once in the first 10 and then once again 10 to 15 and then as many times as you want to okay uh does this character eat sleep conquer and repeat uh no he does <laughs> not i thought you that might is, go with brock that is what eight yeah um Get off of me, fly. This fly's been buzzing me this whole show. Probably because you're not good at cleaning. Does this character show you the money? <laughs> no. Nine. <laughs> it's not Shane O'Mac. All right. Uh, hmm. I like how you completely ignored me <laughs> taking a job cleaning. I, I wasn't going to... Uh, wasn't gonna, you know, condone that. It's a losing battle, you know it. Yeah. Does this character wear a vest? Uh, no. That is ten, and your iterations are reopened. So if you want to ask another question for a previous iteration. Okay. Or you ask something else new, whatever. Uh, is this character legend era? Uh, he is not 11. Dang it. Uh, is this character a technician? He is not 12. Son, son of a biscuit. Uh, oof, this is uh, impressive how much stuff you've picked and literally nothing has been right. Yeah, I haven't hit anything. Uh, jeez. Oh, uh, does this character have a tie? No, that would have been a that would have been a good one, but no. <laughs> thirteen. Uh, frick balls, Batman. Um, jeez. Uh, 
is this character shirtless? Can you be more specific? Their primary gear. Um, are they not wearing a shirt? Can you see their upper body? Well, those aren't two mutually exclusive outcomes. <sighs> I mean, no top at all. Uh, if if the question is, is this character completely topless? The answer is no. <laughs> what what question is that? I need more. Uh, I, I need to get to free reign here. That's that's fourteen. So you would you usually need one more question before it's wide open. But because you literally haven't gotten anything right, I'm gonna I'm gonna open up. I'm going to open it up right now. I, it's been impressively ask, bad. Ask whatever you want, Maris. Be, I, as dodgy, be as dodgy as you would like. Is this class a trickster? Uh, no. 15. There's, there's almost no classes left. It's not a striker. It's not a tech. It's not a tr Is this class an acro? No. 16. Powerhouse. No. <laughs> you got to be kidding me. It's a showboat. The Literally the last one. Okay. So we're down to showboats. It's probably someone I don't even have. Uh, they're not wearing a robe. Oh, I'm not even close. It's not Shane O'Mac because I was very specific. <laughs> <laughs> they're not wearing a robe. They're not modern. They're not Yeah, you wasted, you wasted a lot of questions on very specific people. I think uh, early on. You should work on being more general. Work on stuff that's going to narrow it down. You should mind your own business. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm trying to give you general tips for the future. Yeah, I know. I was trying not to be dodgy. No, okay. but you, you weren't. You were trying to hit a home run dodgy question, <laughs> and you struck out. Okay, is this character, uh, is this character female? No, that is 18, sir. I'm screwed. Uh, okay, facial hair. I'm looking at the guys I don't have to make sure I'm not going to miss one of those. And I'm positive it's a guy, not a guy I don't have. So uh, to recap, you know he is a showboat. You know that he does not have facial hair. He does not wear a hat. He is not completely topless. Um, not modern yeah. not modern not legend uh, uh, he doesn't use multiply gems I think you asked that yeah does okay here we go it's showboats I need to help narrow this down does he use protect gems want to say no let me make sure if it's no you realize i still haven't gotten a single one right because showboat was by default the answer is no he does not use protect gems are you how many do i have left that was 19 sir so your next one is supposed to be your guess what i thought i got one i got a question at 20 and then i have to guess no your 20th question has to be is this person blah i don't like this game so let's 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 harness the power of positivity here, Marix. He is a showboat. He is not legend. He is not modern. He does not have facial hair. He is not topless. He does not use protect gems. He does not use multiply gems. So that eliminates a bunch of people. So it doesn't give you a lot of information, but it eliminates a bunch of people. Right. So what I, people do you have left that that doesn't eliminate? Uh, it eliminates every Attitude Era showboat. Uh, we already know it's not Legend. I'm just going through the list. We already know it's not Modern. Going through that list. Get past that. We are on to new gen, and um, 
It could. It can't. Well, it depends. So nope. It can't be HBK because one gear set has a hat, the other gear set has him shirtless. So it's not HBK. Uh, it's not Yoko because he's got facial hair, and it's not Diesel. So it's not New Gen. Uh, it's in TVPG. Cena has a hat. Rock is shirtless. Orton has facial hair. Uh, Reality, King of Kings, definitely has a hat. Ziggler's an option. So I'm going to come back to Ziggler. Um, Jason Jordan has a goatee. Uh, Ruthless Aggression is not Shane O'Mac. Okay, it's uh, that's where I'm at then. It's just Ziggler. I'm going to say... Uh, show Hold on. Hold on, quick. What? Hold on, sir. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait just a second. One of the statements that you made right now while you were going through your logic, while you were wandering through your mind palace, was factually incorrect. No, it's not. One of the statements you just made was not correct. That's not true. Okay. I'm just, I'm trying to help you out. Wait, Jason Jordan has facial hair. Wait, does he? I don't know. Hold on, let's see. He's got a little scrub goatee. I don't even know where that dude is. Oh, yeah, I guess he does. Either way, that's not its not him, so that's not the statement that was correct. King of Kings is definitely wearing a hat. Yep. Uh, Orton's got facial hair. Cena's got a hat. Rock's missing a shirt. Uh, HBK is missing a shirt. Or if you wear his gears, wearing a hat, so it's not him. Yokozuna. So, so when you asked the question, you asked in their primary gear, are they wearing, are they topless? Right. I also asked if the character wore a hat. Correct. HBK has a hat, and you said no hat. Okay, fine. What do you mean? It's just come, it's just come to my attention that I had HBK's Royal Rumble <laughs> gear on. <laughs> it's HBK. <laughs> it's not. What? It's not HBK. That is Dolph Ziggler. Uh, I'm gonna let you. I'm going to let you make a final decision. <laughs> I'm not saying it is Dolph Ziggler. I'm not saying it's not. You know I'm what? Also not saying it's, I'm also not saying it's not HBK. Maybe it is HBK. This game is flawed. I'm just picking Dolph Ziggler, whatever. Dolph Ziggler showboat. Final answer? Yeah. It is not Dolph Ziggler. If it's HBK, I'm going to be so mad. So we're going to go into the bonus rounds here. Um, let's see how long it takes you to get there. <laughs> no, let's not. So the statement that you made, which was factually incorrect, was you said that eliminates all of the Attitude Era. Who did I miss? Who did I miss? Uh, get to attitude error would help. I'm at where the heck? They're, they must be at the top. They're everyone's favorite. They're at the top. Who did I go past too quickly? Rikishi's got facial hair. Godfather has facial hair. Austin has facial hair. ABA has facial hair. That's all of the showboats. DDP has facial hair. That's all the Attitude Era showboats. This is also factually incorrect. No. No, it's not. Macho Man has facial hair and a hat. <laughs> Booker T's got a mustache. That's facial hair. And he's got a headband thing. It's not, not him. Show's got facial hair. 
It's not him. That's all the showboats. There's none left. Nope. Am I missing an Attitude Era showboat? I don't think so. I mean, you're missing the person that this is, so yeah. Bubba Ray's got facial hair. It's not Bubba Ray. Devon's a striker, and he's got facial hair. <laughs> yeah, it's a showboat. Let's we've 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 narrowed that down. <laughs> it took I, you eighteen questions. Shut up. Got <laughs> shut up. <laughs> I don't I don't see him on my roster. I do not uh, physically see anyone matching your description. I think you're so, you're crazy. So this character you do not have him. What the heck? So maybe look through the people you don't have, Max. I'm I literally have a bunch of times. It superstars in loot. Is Mr. Per NW a perfect attitude era? Oh my gosh. That's just stupid. It's NWO perfect. And the correct answer at question 21, NWO perfect. Good job, Merrick. I literally pass by him every time I was. That's stupid. Not good job. I lost. Dang it. First time. I mean, you did pretty good, I thought. You just made you made assumptions and you tried hitting too many home runs. I did. Oh, you stumped me this time. Excellent job, Sparks. Yep. I figured showboat, huh? Because I was gonna mention him as someone that was too rare, and then I thought, wait a minute, he might not get this one, so I didn't mention him. Oh, you suck. No. It's true. All right. Well, I guess it's time to bring it on home. I'm I'm excited to hear the show because I want to I want to hear what happened um during that time when I was playing Silence Chicken. Yeah, it was really spectacular, enthralling. You you won't miss much. So, um I guess basically what I have to say is uh I want to thank TWO for everything. Uh remember uh that now I have access to everything right away ahead of time without working at it. And it's fantastic. Not even game related, like just everything. Yeah. Everything. Like I have the, I have everything. They, they sent me, they sent a limo earlier today cause I wanted to go get something from the store. That's a block from my house and they just sent a limo. So I didn't even have to walk. It was great. And the limo was driven by Ric Flair. Woo. He's still here. He's he likes to randomly woo. Yeah. Uh, but uh, all seriousness, guys. I actually, thought, I actually thought that was Charlotte, but whatever. In all seriousness, guys, um, I, I do appreciate everyone watching the show. Um, we appreciate your comments. Love to hear what you think on the uh, cream of the crop. It's starting to kind of get down there. We're going to have two slots available. So far, no one's really mentioned too much other than we've had some some Kurt Angle fuss and uh, some other stuff like that. So I think now would be a good time to start letting us know what you think. Or Yeah, allegedly, allegedly the Kurt Angle campaign isn't going to start until we've named all the official people, which I feel like that's bad planning. But Yes, whatever. yeah, that's way too late. You got to start getting those votes, people. I did see uh, there was some concern that um, that they there were thoughts that TWO might pull the plug on the cream of the crop invitational. But as you can see, not the case. I mean, they told us who had to win, and that's HBK. But other than that, the integrity has not changed one bit. No. Um we this isn't a they they don't plan it to the minute um they don't tell us who we have to talk about uh nothing has changed at all wait what about that sheet that had all the stuff that we had to talk about Shh, we're not supposed to talk about that oh sorry it's fine we'll, we'll i'll edit it out later i mean you gotta let me know what stuff is real and what's not real you're saying all this stuff <laughs> i know like how much how am i supposed to know when you're kidding and when you're being serious I mean, I think if people used a little common sense, it would be it would be obvious. But you never know. 
ultimately guys uh i'll leave you with this um game should be fun so you should have fun playing it and uh is that my line this is, i feel like this is two weeks in a row you've been trying to take my line all right i'll let you have your line but uh you know try to have fun out there be positive enjoy the things you do have uh or you can spend so much time uh looking at the stuff you don't have that you miss what's right in front of your face that you like uh and i will quit being preachy so i super appreciate all the support remember to like subscribe share um you know you don't even have to listen just hit the button just hit the button we appreciate that um and when you're and remember when you're not when you're not positive you make the puppy of positivity sad and what type of a monster do you have to be to purposely make a puppy sad i mean that's pretty terrible so just saying yeah don't be don't be terrible don't be terrible i agree so uh thanks for watching the show and good luck out there guys and remember guys it's just a game relax have fun with it turn it off merricks doing it now